Vice Now, I am Dustin Baker. We are here on our typical late night uh, Saturday night set. And then when you, by the time you watch this episode, you will be 10 weeks away from Vikings football. They start on September 8th, which is 70 days away if you're watching this on Sunday. we got a first-time guest right in the middle here. Mr. New, how are you, man? Hey, doing well. How's your weekend been? Everything's been wonderful and uh, glad to be here. Really glad to be here. Yeah, we're starting the countdown. We got about three weeks till training camp. The aforementioned 10 weeks till regular season. Um, Brevin, how are you, man? Oh, we're pretty good. We were talking pre show about kind of we're in the dregs of the offseason now. There's no NBA, there's no NHL with the NHL draft ending today. So we got to find something to talk about for the, the next 10 weeks, as you <laughs> mentioned. And, um, yeah, I was just, I'm trying to get through this. This part of the year sucks because it's just NASCAR and baseball. The weird part is for the NFL speak that it's, and it's right here in the here and now you're talking about the slow time. But well, mm-hmm. once we get to training camp, then there's no looking back until yep. this time next year. Uh, the mm-hmm. NFL does a wonderful job of spacing out its calendar, uh, especially the bonanza of the draft lead up and then free agency, of course, right before that. And then even for, from the Vikings' perspective, now because the t- uh, team has made so many changes, May was pretty entertaining. But Mr. Yep. New, in case we forget the end of the episode, what is it you do in this digital space? Are you on YouTube? Tell us about your, your enterprises. Uh, I've been for you know the last four or five years here now. I've been kind of growing the brand of soda uh, mm-hmm. was my kind of my brand. But I, I uh, switched uh, over into doing a lot of from more promotions as to like maybe I'll do my own. But then I ended up getting a little ENT stuff. Um, so, uh, for my health reasons and stuff, I had to kind of just be more low key for the last four years, okay. but now we got a new set being built and we're going bigger and bigger, but mostly, uh, traveling over to YouTube, but also on, of course, uh, X, uh, TikTok and everywhere else. And pretty much you can find me as Mr. New or at soda new. Um, and that's primarily the, the two names. Tell us thanks- about the, tell us about the YouTube show. Uh, the YouTube show is just basically, uh, going to be, um, so I'm going to break down a, a lot of my takes and my film a lot of my stuff is it's different it's different than everybody else's stuff so i take the analytics i love analytics but i'm not a strictly analytical guy i don't just like that i like my eyes i have a lot of experience watching and so i can call a lot of plays you know i'm not i'm not, I'm not romo out here on, on broadcasting <laughs> but you know uh you know I, I i can you know see and have a lot of vision for what I, I, I like. And a good example would be Reisner last year. And I try to tell people, you know, PFF don't really, it, it doesn't understand the synergy of when two people are playing and you miss an assignment and you got to go this way and the other guy's got to go this way and, and it messes everything up. And then one guy's got to take on two blocks and then you wonder why it gets injured or something like that. And you're like, ah, well, it, well the PFF grade says that this guy's better though. I don't get it. <laughs> and, and it just that's the stuff and it just cranks me up and so that's going to be the whole show is it's a okay. uh, high level high octane uh bringing it right to you and letting you know what i think that's let's it. get some of that high level high octane stuff here tonight <laughs> i'm going to ask you right out of the gate um brevin talked about being in the, the slow period so we're going to do kind of a review of the off season which is a look ahead in itself to the regular season besides the new quarterback because i think even the most ardent of kirk cousins <clears throat> fans or supporters are reasonably excited about the direction with J.J. McCarthy. So other than the quarterback selection, because that's kind of a no-brainer, what was your favorite off-season move that we've seen <coughs> since February or March? Well, I, uh, I don't know, off-season move. Uh, I don't know if you can count this as that. I mean, obviously, I, I do like you know jumping up and grabbing Dallas Turner. I know a lot of people were worried about the picks and stuff, but I see him, as a lot of other people do, as a very high round, maybe a number one in a different draft, a number two, three, whatever person want to say but uh i'm excited for the whiteouts man like that's <laughs> that's that's the big one for me dude like the new helmets the new i love it and mm-hmm. the whole explanation behind it and then when i seen um what was the the ravens i believe sorry if i get it wrong when they came out with theirs and so i was really glad we didn't go with the gold face plates because i know a lot of people did with the, like where's the gold and people were like well there's no gold in ice and it's kind of just ice covering it is what i was told i don't know if that's the exact answer or not but that's what i was told and so it's just ice covered and that's the theme and I, I i loved it and so uh the white everything from the whiteout game to the uniforms and everything i really like that yeah i'm excited about that as well because it seemed like the vikings were like the one team that never did too much 
to rock the boat with uniforms. Uh, every year we'd see, hey, this team's getting the new helmet. And we're like, well, that's not happening around <laughs> here. So finally, they got outside their comfort zone and did something uh, really cool and stylish, uh, even though there were a handful of naysayers that wanted to retain, I think, more purple presence. Or I don't, I don't even really know what Honestly, was. I think the Vikings do such a great job listening to the fan base, hearing what they want, and then interpreting that and making it a reality. I think that they mm-hmm. are always going to have eight, zillion haters but (laughs) you know as long as you're not seeing a giant ratio which you don't in those uh you see mostly love on them i think they killed it i think they crushed it i mean they they crushed the uniforms Uh, uh, i couldn't have seen drew it up better and they'll wear those in december what about uh personnel moves is there any other off-season moves that you were like hell yeah baby well jj signing of course (laughs) that was a relief uh, I got really tired of hearing people, you know, talk about, oh, the- well, theoretically, you know, the quarterback situation back there ain't going to be that good. And so, you know, it's like, well, you don't know. We we don't know how good the quarterback situation is going to be. If our quarterback schemes and stuff can draw up things with our receivers who are at a very elite, if they can draw up Nick Mullins getting 400 yards a game, I think – which is no knock on Nick Mullins, but I don't think you just come fresh out of the gate and toss 400. That's a lot when you look at yards. I don't know why that's goofy, but that that's a <laughs> lot of air yards to me. And uh, I just feel like uh, that is a massive thing for a young quarterback to step into. I, I don't know where they're going to go with the quarterbacks and stuff exactly, but I, I, I just think uh, that, that that's going to be great for both JJ and JA. And the quarterback situation will be perfect and fine. And so I'm glad we got that locked up. And then all, you know, everybody's pretty happy, at least for now. Yep. Jefferson and McCarthy are, the contracts are exactly aligned to the end of the 2028 season. Brevin, what do you got for Mr. New? Yeah. So speaking of the dregs of the off season, training camp is so close, but so far away, just like the start of the regular season and the Hall of Fame game at this point. You know, you're like kind of itching for football. <laughs> and I think by like mid July, I'm going to be like, like my skin's going to be wearing off. I'm itching for it. But what are you looking most forward to in training camp this off season for the Vikings? It, I, what I want to see in training camp, and I, I, I know everybody's burnt out on McCarthy takes, but I got a little bit of a different take on McCarthy than a lot of people. I don't, I don't see him as the same. It took me, it took me a ton of time. I was one of those big people on wait till eleven. Mm-hmm. I, I don't mind that they moved up at ten. I love that. That's great, and I, I love it for a multitude of reasons. Whether it's just getting a, a, the, the highest, you know, quarterback. I love the the money you get there and the the, the, the contracts and everything within the first top ten. It just how everything works out. <laughs> so it works out great in all aspects. But just I could, I wanted to stay there because I just believed that he would be there. I just felt like he would be there, and we could use that capital later. But the the thing that I see the most, and I couldn't figure it out, is that these balls are zipping right by defenders' heads, and. I'm just like, at first, that's going to be picked in the NFL. That's that's going to be picked, but it wasn't. And then you you get multitudes of years of it, and everybody wants to hide behind the fact, just like with the Celtics. Oh, well, they're just easy teams. They're the champions still. They beat the Mavs, didn't they? they, they, they. So if that's mm. going to be your narrative, is you're just going to use something like that and be like, well, as a running team, I think when after, to get to my point, like the velocity in which it comes out, this is more of a Brett Farvish type player than an Alex Smith type player. And so what I want to see – come training camp is kind of what they seen with Patrick Mahomes is players may, not ready for them to start, but just the idea of that this guy is going to be a starter. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, 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 that's the jump he takes, you know, not that, that, that it's, he's the starter, but it's that, that is the jump that JJ McCarthy takes to where other people are looking and they're like, Oh dude, he's slinging it. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's going to be the man. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I like the comparison there. Cause a lot of it, it's the natural thing to do when you you break up with the ex girlfriend. You compare everybody to her, but like with Kirk Cousins, like the there was immediate comparisons of like, oh, JJ McCarthy is the same type of quarterback that Kirk Cousins is. Like, what are you talking <laughs> not, about? Not even that. Uh, was... Not yeah. I don't. Like, I don't get. It. I don't. And I know it's the the Vikings fan thing or NFL fan. Don't you want to do that? You want to compare it to the last quarterback? Like I even saw comparisons of Zach Wilson which was even lazier because they are, like, near the same height and have the same Maybe hairstyle. The yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, but past that, it's like, I don't, I don't know. But, no, I like your comparison. I, I just feel like 
I dive into the film and that's what I just look. Mm -hmm. That's why I say I look at the analytics, I look at the stuff, but then you got to look at the intangibles. Like, why couldn't that guy get his head around? And yep. then I see him talk about things like, well, I go out and talk to a receiver. You know, I, I got I, I got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of tenacity in me. I want to go out and I want to ask him what's going on. I don't want to insult him. I don't want to insult the guy, but I want to say, how can I make this better for you? How can I throw that better? How can I read your mind? How can I get in your spot? And then that's how you're able to get these mystical, magical, dice them up, Joe Burrow, Tom Brady-esque, you know, really just just slicey and dicey guys really. And that's what mm -hmm. also why I also see Brett because of the velocity. And this is something that I'd noticed that I really, I've never told anybody yet, but uh, <laughs> I was, I was breaking down these throws, especially that one throw. I, I think it was maybe to Josh Oliver in the back, but maybe it could have been someone else. Uh, I was a tiptoe in the back end zone. It was earlier. It was about 40 yards. When I was breaking it down, I was trying to do it in my, in my camera and the ball from it, the time from his stance before his hitch, or, or right maybe it's, yeah before the hitch to get the ball out and everything the whole entire process of the release through 10 yards was one frame or like mm -hmm. two frames or like that it skipped or whatever it's just like and the ball was it teleported out of his hands with such velocity and i just think i didn't understand how fast this young man throws the ball dude yeah. like he's cooking it out there like, I remember Brett Favre, I believe, I don't quote me on this, but I believe he used to have like a thing or a story about they used to have a thing for fingers broken in the lockers. And the Packers, <laughs> they used to train for this. The same thing with Aaron Rodgers. He used to go right up to the jugs machine. Doof, 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 mm -hmm. and catch him right out of the jugs. So you're ready for that caliber of quarterback. And I just, I really hope that that's what the, I hope the team gives them, encourages the touch, teaches the touch, but doesn't sway away from that power because I think that is the key characteristic why he's able to make all those throws. I think you take that away and he, and he's not going to do that. Yeah. When and I that, that ties in beautifully to the point that like the Vikings didn't draft JJ McCarthy for what he did in college. It's awesome that he won a national championship. Don't get me wrong. And he was one of the most efficient quarterbacks in the country. One of the most clutch quarterbacks in the country, one of the best quarterbacks in the country on third down, but the tool set that JJ McCarthy has, and hopefully maybe we're jumping a little too quickly to calling Kevin O'Connell quarterback whisperer because we just haven't seen it yet. And just because he played quarterback in recent memory doesn't mean he's a quarterback whisperer, but hopefully he is. And to give him somebody with the tools like J.J. McCarthy at McCarthy's a very young 21 years old right now. Um, I think everything you said ties in and goes beautifully with the fact that the Vikings drafted him for who, what he has in his toolbox and what he can become and not because he lit it up in college. Cause some of the best quarterbacks in college football history turned out to be nothing in the NFL, like Matt Leiner, Tim Tebow, Vince Young, nothing. So I, I mean, it's hard. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the whole game. That's the whole challenge, mm. <laughs> you know? And when you find out things like, Oh, we haven't even drafted inside the top 10 for QBs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that might, that could be part of the deal. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe also, not. No, uh, no rookie quarterback has ever started week one for the Vikings, a streak that will probably continue on to mm -hmm. uh, this year, this year, but yeah. So we do things differently around here. The Kirk cousins comp. I couldn't, when I started studying, the, the quarterback class, I could never understand it for J.J. McCarthy because no matter what test or scouting report, what he, whatever you use while watching the film, they don't have similar styles. And so the only thing I could settle on as a comp was people – People must think that McCarthy can only be that good. Like when he gets mm -hmm. to his peak, he's only going to be about the 12th best quarterback. That's a shitty way to do a comp, but that's yeah. the only thing I could figure out because there was no stylistics. I mean, they both <clears throat> throw the football. That's about as stylistically yeah. similar as they get. Uh, Kirk, Kirk was a little bit more mobile during the Washington days, but he wasn't mobile like this with McCarthy. And I, it was just a really bizarre comparison. And I settled on, well, they, that has to just be almost a troll job to say that he can only get to about 12th or 13th best in the league, which is what Cousins is uh, every year. They are both slightly awkward six foot three <laughs> white males. That have a yeah. oh, yeah. 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 same thing with yeah, with like and went to college in Michigan. And, yeah. The, the All right. Um, oh yeah, Michigan too. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Mr. New, the next thing I got for you is we are on the doorstep, if we're not there already, on starting to look at the 53 man roster cutoff. There's 91 players on the team right now. On this board back here, this will eventually become the roster board when the uh once I get around to it. I want to know. Love it. I love hey. the looks of it, dude. I love I it. I, it. Yeah. <laughs> 
The murder board. It. Yep. Yeah, um, it's start, my favorite me, way to do it. <laughs> give me a sleeper or two that you believe can make the 53 man roster that he's a guy who's not really talked about or who's firmly on the bubble, <laughs> but you think he'll make it start, start to give me some of your sleeper stuff for these Vikings. So I don't even know if the coaches have thought about this, but if you're hearing this guys, I got an idea. No, <laughs> 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 if you hear me out though, for real. Um, you know, I started thinking about Dwayne McBride, man, and special mm-hmm. teams and the kicking changes. And we don't know how that's really going to turn out. And whether it's any kind of special teams playing, but re- returning, whether it's punt returning or kick returning, I, I feel like maybe, maybe he might, maybe Dwayne McBride might not make the cut as one of the running backs, you know, but as a special teamer, you know, that, that can sometimes really really help out our team and because it was really hard I, like you look through a lot of the a lot of the guys and you're like maybe Andrew Booth you know and you start looking you are just like I don't know man it seems like it's almost pretty clear almost now like they almost seem like they have a pretty pretty good set there um except for maybe in the in the trenches in the internal trenches there there might be some battling I think too um but um yeah I think I think Dwayne McBride could possibly surprise everybody and do like a Darren Sproles type special teams return or maybe a, or like a Marcus Sherrill's punt return, whether it's maybe it's not kick return, but maybe, but like I said, I, you know, with the new rules, I don't know how that's going to work out. And I know we already have solid returners and stuff, but um, it's a high injury impact spot. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Would that mean that Kanae Wangu is on the way out? No, Kenny would be a, a spot in. Kenny okay. would be on the 50s so then as, so a, as a running back, as a main returner probably. Okay, so they'd carry four running backs? Basically. Maybe. I am I'm, I'm, don't know. Maybe. I'm, that was kind of what I was looking at there. I was thinking, you know, for sure, definitely Aaron Jones, of course. And then mm-hmm. I feel like Ty Chandler is, you know, I've seen flashes of some stuff that look really, really, really promising. And then – as you kind of get deeper, you know, you know, the hammer should be back, even though, you know, it's not, wasn't utilized a ton last year. I do think he's got hands. I think the blocking is important. I think all that stuff really helps a lot. And so I think he'll be there. And so when I get to that fourth spot at a special teamers, you know, um, am I thinking, are we going to have to separate with these new rules and have a punt returner and a kick returner? being that they're different and maybe think of it as an inverse situation. Whereas, you know, we're going to want the short burst and speed maybe off these new kick return rules. And then we're going to put you back over at punt returning Kenny, okay. because uh, that's, that's what you're used to with the longer distance there. We just got to get you set up and some coaches in here, some, some special team coaching on you. Um, but that's just a thought because like I said, I had a really hard time. I don't know if you guys did or not uh, um, trying to find a, a, like a special gem in that spot. Yeah, you, we might have to get to the first week of training camp to see how the team is emphasizing some of these guys. My uh, my deep sleeper right now is uh, Taki Taimani on the defensive line only because he, at least on University of Oregon's website, weighs 330 pounds, um, and that would make him the only true nose tackle at all on the roster. And because they don't have Sheldon Day, they don't have Kairos Tonga, uh, my theorized deep sleeper is a nose tackle in general. Uh, so Taimani is on there. But, yeah, I'm with you that uh, right now a lot of the UDFAs are still mysterious. And I don't even know if it's that bold to say, hey, Gabriel Murphy's going to make the team because uh, if he's like Ivan Pace at all, uh, he should make the 53-man roster or risk be putting on the practice squad and stolen. And I think, I, I think like you said, I don't know why Rodriguez, I believe, was an interior lineman in the draft, but I think he's mm-hmm. a little lighter. You know, yeah. so if you're talking pure tackling, you know, taking up space, uh, we don't have a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's 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 almost like uh, the Flores defense doesn't give a shit about <laughs> big big bodies because they don't have any. I mean, Harrison Phillips, it was all it was already weird to see him showcased as a nose tackle because he's about eh, 15, 20 pounds lighter than you would uh, have as a uh, prototypical nose tackle. And then they didn't go out of their way to sign any sweet ass defensive tackles. I'm, I'm starting to just realize that Ryan Flores doesn't do things the way the world does at defensive tackle. So, all right, Brevin, what's our next thing? Yeah. So what is our next thing? Oh, duh. <laughs> um, 
Brian good or Flores. bad. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm so glad for, he stayed. For good or for bad, you can tell people what they want to hear right now, or you can crush their hearts and be evil Vikings man on the screen. Um, what is your hottest take for the Minnesota Vikings in 2024? I'm going to call it right now, man. Uh, I'm just like, let everybody know, man. Like, put the world on notice. Dallas the Dragon Turner's coming. He's coming. <laughs> He's coming for that, you know, that that offensive or that defensive rookie uh, of the year. I, I just, I just, I'm watching him, dude, and his legs are constantly moving. His arms are like, I don't know. What is he like? Got the mutant powers where they just stretch out, they get wings. Mm -hmm. He dude looks like a bird out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's amazing, but just the size, the athleticism, and then you look at the work that he's putting in. Every every time I look at any any of the highlights, any of the things, the dude is just drenched in sweat, working so hard. And yeah. I think he's got something to prove. And I think he's going to show everybody, hey, these quarterbacks are great. They're great. All these other players are great. Wide receivers, awesome. But we have uh, value two over here. And we can uh, eliminate that quarterback spot. Oh, for sure. So how did you, you touched on it a little bit before about liking the move up for him. What specifically did you like about the the trade itself for Dallas Turner? Was it just kind of like everything? Because some people were overthinking it a lot and worried about the trade charts and the draft values and whatnot. <coughs> so like, what's your take on that? Like, I get it. I get it. We need yeah. stuff. We need stuff. <clears throat> but I, mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like as a fan that's watched for so many years, I got a little patience in me and it doesn't need to be right now every year. Yeah. And I need to understand that. And understanding that gives me an understanding that, you know what? We, we maybe got a year. If JJ's got to sit there and Sam darnold has got to do this and that, we got to kind of, you know, whatever. We, maybe, maybe we're not the, the prototypical championship team. And I'm not saying we can't make it there or anything like that by any means, because I think every single team that steps out on the field has a chance and you never know. Someone could just break out at any time, but mm -hmm. I mean, getting rid of those couple picks there meant that you probably got rid of some maybe higher end players, but this dude is going to be a cornerstone player. Oh, yeah. People think that Neil Hunter, oh my gosh, he was amazing. Everson Griffin, oh my gosh, he was amazing. This dude is <laughs> people. Yeah. I don't think people understand, man. If anyone's a fan of like Micah Parsons in Dallas, this was my comp to him. I'll just in, instead of being more of that, more of a leaning towards the middle linebacker style as opposed to an outside linebacker style, mm -hmm. just a, a little bigger, a little more, you know, whatever. But and I just think that the way Flores is going to utilize him, this dude is going to be an absolute game crusher. And if we're willing to give up 800 years of picks <laughs> to move up to the number three spot, and this dude could have been a third in any other draft, if it wasn't completely focal on how the media narrates it every year, whether it's, oh, it's wide receivers this year, it's whatever's getting more value and whatever's not. And that just, that just is fluid and it always changes. But if you just look at it as a whole and you realize what his true value is, you realize he is worth that. Yeah. And speaking on that, we were talking to Phil Mackey last, yeah, last week um, and he brought up a good point because, of course, when you in the vacuum, if you look at these draft day trades, you're looking at like the value of the picks themselves. So Minnesota gave up what 23, a three, four, five, four, 17. I don't, Minnesota wasn't looking at it like that. They looked at it like they're giving up 23, three, four, and five for the guy that should have gone eighth overall to Atlanta, but for some reason dropped to 17. And the they, knew, reason, they, they knew they did yeah. wrong. They knew they mm -hmm. did wrong. So they're like, you know what? We know the NFL is just going to give us, you know, a slap on the wrist. So we're going to help you out. We're going to help you out. <laughs> yeah. And going for me personally, like for a lot of people, I think they would align with the school of thought going into the draft that if you're re signing Kirk Cousins and either keeping or letting Daniil Hunter go, you're drafting Dallas Turner. Yeah. So the fact that you're drafting your quarterback of the future and Dallas Turner, and you didn't have to give up any of the four first-round picks we thought we were going to have to give up to get just the quarterback of the future, mm -hmm. 
I don't get how you, I really yeah. don't get what more you want. Right. Cause I mean, what then, what, I mean, if we move up and we get rid of all that stuff, like, like people were saying for, for Drake may, I mean, that that's way more than what we gave up. Mm-hmm. And, and so that would have been all, all or nothing all in, you know, whereas now it's it, a little more flexible and, and you can move around and, yeah, yeah. I don't, the only thing I don't. that frustrates me about that whole situation that's like very loosely tied to it is now you don't really have any picks next year and you signed Shaq Griffin to give up a third round pick. So I'm like, why why the fuck did you sign Shaq Griffin? That, to I didn't be know honest? that one. Maybe <laughs> yeah. belief. But, but, I, you know, this is the only thing I could think of. And this is I thought of it also with and and I'm sure you're itching Dustin. Sorry. <laughs> um I it was just I thought that maybe this is helping Brian Flores stick around mm-hmm. as well, which is something I would, I would be on board for. It could you know be, I mean? yeah. If that's what it is, it's like, yeah, dude, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, notably on Kirk cousins and Daniel Hunter, <clears throat> those guys for the next couple of years together will cost about 65, $67 million per season. And uh, the Vikings replaced that type of coin with two rookies. I mean, who aren't necessarily dirt cheap because they're first rounders, but <clears throat> Yeah, uh, you guys are correct that they were one for one and two for two swaps, at least on the depth chart. Now we'll hope that um, both are better than their predecessor. All right, the last thing I want to ask you, Mr. New, is the third wide receiver on this team is unknown. Usually it'd be TJ Hawkinson, but he probably won't play to start the season. So, Mr. New, do you think that the WR3 is on this roster? And if so, who will that be week one? Or is it some dude who is a free agent or on another team? Uh, you, you know, everybody says Adam's coming. No, <laughs> no, he worked out with the team. Everybody's just, hey, I was trying to tell everybody, hey, man, he's just chilling. It's cool to see him. Um, I was a big Powell fan, man. I feel like he's earned the right to be out there a lot. I feel like every catch that was really crucial a lot of those times, especially when KJ wasn't able to haul him in some of those games, Powell was there. And these were very high intensity moments and i do think the rookies will rotate i think it'll be a rotating spot you know obviously i don't think it's going to be just a one person but Mm -hmm. i i do like powell there i like brandon powell yeah i'd say he's probably the front runner um jalen naylor (laughs) i don't know if you guys saw this this is really funny in the espn article that digested all of the mini camps uh kevin seifert said in the article like, hey, Jalen Naylor, this team's still high on him. He's super fast. He just needs his opportunities. By the way, he wasn't at minicamp because he had the flu. And I was like, oh, yeah, of course he wasn't there. It's like it's hilarious how it always this always happens to the same guys. But it was really funny because I was, I was reading into it. It was like this big rah-rah paragraph. And then it said, like, he wasn't at minicamps because he had the flu. And I'm like, oh, my God. Um, all right, Mr. New, you got any closing arguments on Saturday night? <clears throat> well, my, my closing argument is going to definitely be to all the um, all the mediocrity J.J. McCarthy believers. I'm going to let you guys know also. Like, I've already said stuff I said to say about Dallas Turner and what I believe he's going to play. I, I, I really like big cornerbacks with, like, Kyrie Jackson, and I know that, you know, Brian Flores is going to get this defense nice and tight. Uh, the offensive line, everything looking great. But, and I know everybody talks about McCarthy, like I said, but this is... I don't believe this is going to be some mediocre dude. I believe that this dude has the potential, but he, I mean, it's obviously the work has to be put in the belief has to be put in all the stuff that goes with it. Everything that goes with it time as well. But I believe he has a chance to be in the top five. And I know the top five is always rotating, but I just believe with, with the, with, like I said, with that velocity and with, he's also empathetic. So what he's able to do is he's able to put himself into someone else's shoes. And when you're able to do that, you could read people. And you study the tape, you read them, you know their tendencies. And then you start to you hear them out there, you get the feel of it. And when you got that much velocity, you know when you could fit it in a tight window and when you can't. And when he starts to get that, that confidence and a little bit more veteran savviness to him and stuff, I really think as he develops, you're three, four, five, I think you're going to see a guy that is – possibly a future, maybe MVP. I'm not even joking. And I know, like I said, that sounds wild, but my comps after I figured more out when I seen that velocity, when I seen the fact that I, cause I couldn't figure it out. They're like, oh, he's, he's got his release is actually slower. Well, I was like, like I said, I was looking at the film and I'm, I'm just slowing it down. And that ball was in his hand from starting position all the way through his 
throwing motion and then another 10 yards within one second. And then I'm wondering that that's how it's getting by these dudes heads. That's where it's getting. So there, you know, once he's able to like get loose and like, you're going to see like that, you know, that Brett Favre, Percy Harvin one, or like some of those, you know, old throws, I feel like when he gets loose like that and unleashes the cannon, people are going to understand this is not just, Oh, he was behind the running game. Oh, he was this. Oh, he was that. It's going to be, this is the man, dude. We better put some respect on his name real, real fast because, because he's very good. Like, uh, like, uh, like Joe Burrow. Good. We should hang out with Thor Nystrom sometime. Uh, mm-hmm. You guys kind of have the same take. Some, all right, man. Why don't, uh, why don't we have you back on sometime in August around preseason so we can start to maybe size up what McCarthy looks like in those games and trading camp. Brevin, you got anything to close out the show? I think we wrapped it up. Perfect. All right. Tell us again, Mr. New, wh- where we can find you on YouTube and TikTok. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, uh, you know, uh, YouTube is Mr. New, TikTok, Mr. New, everything's Mr. New. Some of it's sort of new or also socials, X, uh, as they call it now, Twitter, uh, whatever everybody likes to call it. I know, I think Elon puts a different name up every day. Like, you know, what should it be? <laughs> I don't, I don't know, dude, you own it. <laughs> call it whatever you want. <laughs> but yeah, just, just, the, just those ones. And I think I'm on, I do a little bit of Twitch stuff too, but okay. mainly we're going to be moving to YouTube. So a little smaller now, but it's going to be growing fast and furious and especially with the new set coming up it's gonna be oh <laughs> i can't wait i got i got some stuff like i said you guys i'm gonna be breaking down film like a maniac that's sweet um all right gentlemen you have a wonderful night and we'll talk to you guys soon hey thanks guys so much yeah take it easy nice